You're listening to Build Your Happier Marriage podcast, where we help Christian wives of entrepreneurial husbands build happier marriages without compromising their faith or sacrificing their personal growth. Today's topic is how to find balance and harmony in the home without harboring resentment. We'll get to that right after this. Hello and welcome to the Happier Marriage Podcast, a podcast for spouses longing to have a happier marriage so they can feel more connected, desired and supported. Now, to start the show, here is your host, Anne Sherpa, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified relationship coach, Kingsley Grant. So, as we get into today's topic on how to find balance and harmony in the home without harboring resentment, I would like to ask you these three questions. Okay, ready? Here we go. The first one is, do you ever feel like you're juggling dreams and children, trying to keep everything in balance while feeling overwhelmed and unsupported? Have you ever asked yourself, how can I find harmony in my busy home without feeling resentful towards my husband? And are you longing for a way to reconnect with your husband and work towards your shared dreams? Now, If these questions resonate with you or even one of the three, then you're just like the many of the other wives, just like you, who are trying to find balance and harmony in their home, especially in their marriage with all that is going on. And this seems to be the thing that eludes them. Now, you, like these wives, are probably feeling emotionally exhausted, unappreciated, and the disconnection that is taking place in your marriage is just getting deeper or wider. You're feeling it. It's very evident. Uh, You can see the feel of tension in the air. There is this almost like two ships passing in the night kind of relationship. There are just far and few between conversations that take place, and maybe it's starting to affect your health, your sleep, what you're eating or not eating, your interaction with the kids and your husband, right? Maybe you're finding yourself to be a bit sharper or your tone, but just very quick to get irritated and and upset and annoyed, and everything seemed to irritate you. So the question becomes, what do you do with this? How do you find balance and harmony in your home and marriage with all that's happening? Well, this and more we'll tackle right after this. So the big question is this, how is it possible that you have a happier marriage when You feel like you've tried everything. Your spouse isn't making an effort. You're exhausted. You feel like giving up. Or there's so much hurt that's taken place between you and your spouse. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. Now, one of the things I wanted to to kind of bring to your attention is, as I mentioned, this is something that you're not the only one that is experiencing this. And I'm speaking basically from both personal experience, but also from my professional experience. As you might know, and that I have been a licensed marriage and family therapist for almost two decades, and I've really worked with hundreds, I mean, literally hundreds and hundreds of of couples and spouses like yourself, and other, of course, issues as well. And so I have really heard stories like yours, I could say very, very, very often. But here's here's the thing as well that I want to share is that in my own personal journey, as of this recording, being married for 39 years and counting, as you can imagine, there are things that I have to, I've also experienced in my own life, my own marriage. Because like your husband, 
I am that guy as well who is working steadily in every extra hour, every extra moment that I get working on this business that I, in my mind, well, not my mind, in my marriage, I, I'm, I'm working on this to create for my family. I want my family to experience the many things, the dreams that are on my heart for my family, my wife, especially because my kids are now adults. And so they're much older and they're on their own. So basically it's about my wife and I in our latter years of life. You know, I'm not that old, but still at a place where I would love to be able to to travel more and having the, the wherewithal, the financial you know, ability to do that. And I'm sure that's what your husband is possibly thinking and have this dream, being able to not having to worry about constantly checking the discount and the clearance section. And, you know, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with that because I believe that that will always be a part of our, our story because my wife and I, we're pretty conservative to the most part, right? But we like nice things. We like to travel. We like to go on vacation. I'm sure, you know, who doesn't? And your husband possibly is trying to create that freedom uh, of location, where right? location freedom, financial freedom, and being able to give you the things that he has on his heart. And he's steadily working on that. And he's probably feeling frustrated at times because maybe – is not there yet. And he's in his mind believing that if he only work a bit harder, a bit longer hours, he'll get it. But it's at the price of the relationship. You're experiencing that and, and you're 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 all for him. You are a cheerleader and supportive. But as in anything, it comes a time where you you start to question, what about me? What about our relationship? What about our marriage? Because that is getting the leftovers, if even that anymore. So it's a struggle. And I can tell you, like I said, you know, things are better for me now, but in the earlier stages, I can tell you that even though my wife did not um, constantly, you know, share or, or lift or make this, but she would make it in different, in indirect ways. Like we need to get away or we need to go out or, you know, in those ways are, is basically appealing in, and asking, what about us with our, our time? So indirectly, she would make those requests, and I had to be sensitive. But sometimes I can tell you, um, when I feel like I just really need to work a bit longer, and I'm thinking, oh, man, I may go, but I'm, my mind is not present. I'm not really there. And sometimes you probably feel that to yourself where you're with your husband and you're, you're wondering, where is his mind? Where is he now? You may say, hey, come on in, you know, you may check in with him and and, and, and and trying to get him to be present with you. And I see that many, many times and I hear those stories quite a bit and I can imagine how it must be for you because I can tell you, I too have had those moments. And as the husband, like your husband, it is it's a tricky dance because we know that we ought to be there and we're feeling the guilt and the stress and the pressure. And it's hard, right? And so we've been hold, you've been holding out for a long time, and you're 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 asking the question, how much longer? How much longer? Now I want to share a verse of scripture that I believe is is pertinent. Now I want to be very careful when I read this scripture because sometimes we hear those things and you know we we know it's it's right. We know we what we ought to do, but sometimes it hits at the wrong time, right? Sometimes we share the, the scripture at the wrong time because that's the last thing we want to think about. But we need to remind ourselves because God is also at work and he's also doing some things in our lives and he does not let that up. You know, he's not like, okay, I'm going to give you a pass or give, you know, anyone a pass because God wants us to become more like his son, Jesus Christ. And so Ephesians 4 verses 2 and 3 it says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Oh, boy, I'm sure you're probably thinking, do I want to hear that right now? Maybe you're not, maybe you're not saying that. Maybe you are saying, you know, I need it to be reminded. Or maybe you're saying, you know, I, I just really don't want to hear that right now. 
Maybe you're too upset. Maybe you're just spent. You're frustrated. You're exhausted. And I get it. But we we know that God's word is really a lamp onto our feet and the light onto our pathway. It is a thing that refreshes us. So I know sometimes we don't want to hear, but it is really for, as the Bible says, it's for our for conviction, for 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 helping us to, to know what we need to do. And it says here that we ought to work towards keeping the bond of peace. And I'm sure that is something that you want to uh, be keeping and you'll be working at that. And that's the problem. That's a challenge because you're, res- you're holding back and you're constantly sacrificing and you're making this effort and you're wondering, well, so when it's my turn, when is my husband going to also make the effort? What about him? And, and you know what? I, I cannot argue with that. However, we need to make sure that we are we're walking and, and guarding our hearts so we don't somehow get it in a space of bitterness and anger because those things can really ruin our relationship with God, but also just how we interact with people, you know, our family. We start saying things and, and maybe even swearing or just being so angry. And, you know, those anger can lead us to do things and say things that we regret so we want to be very careful of that. You know, Eva Burrows had this quote where she says, In family life, love is the oil that eases friction, the cement that binds closer together, and the music that brings harmony. And so we want to continue to, to love. You know, I think it was Mother Teresa had said, you know, the late Mother Teresa had said, you know, People, you may love people and they may not love you, but she says, love them anyway. Because really, if we think about what love does, love does not keep track uh, track of wrongdoings. Love does not return evil for evil. Love overcomes evil by doing good. And and you, I know you, you know all that, so I don't have to be telling you that at this, to- at this time, right? But we want to be reminded that these are for our own good. Because God also wants to do a work in our hearts. And maybe this is what he is doing in this season in your life. Like I mentioned, your husband is probably feeling the pressure and the guilt of not being present. So he also is going through his own issues. He's bearing this as well. He may not say much. As you know, we as men, we don't necessarily talk about our emotions and our feelings too much. But it doesn't mean we're not feeling something. We're feeling and we, we just don't say much. And many times we need for you to, to help us. Maybe your husband needs for you to um, ask him some questions because in asking him questions, he feels like you're caring and you, and he, he knows that, but it helps him to be reminded of how much you care for him. And it's how you ask the questions, right? And the way, the way that is the when, the when of the question, because timing is everything. And maybe your husband is, is you know, working from this place of fear of failure, and the desire to provide so much for you and, and the kids. And he wants so much to, to make you proud of him and to succeed. Because when he succeeds, you also succeed, right? Because he's envisioning this financial freedom and the ability to, to travel and even work from wherever he's at. He wants that for you. And so he's, he's fulfilling the scripture in Proverbs 12, verse 24, where it says, The hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. He wants to be that diligent hand that works hard because he knows um, he has you in his mind. I can just imagine because, you know, why do I know that? I don't know your husband, but I do know me. And your husband, if he's anything like me, I understand what he might be going through and he's trying to communicate that to you. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't have your own struggles with all of this, as I mentioned earlier, because you're managing household responsibilities and and sometimes feeling like a single parent. And you're even even saying to yourself, you know, I I could do this on my own because you might be doing that. But really having that husband there to support you, because I can tell you, I have worked also with single parents who don't have a husband beside her or, you know, or maybe don't have a wife beside him. And I, and I can tell you because, you know, for whatever reason, maybe a divorce or uh, they're a widow and it's just not the same. They will tell me that just having someone there in the house that they can even look at and talk to. And even even though they're mad at each other, but just having that person there 
and now they don't have that person, it's doubly hard for them. So, yes, I know the relationship may not be where you want it right now, and you're feeling like you're a single parent, but let's understand this. You're not. Your husband is still there, and thank God that your husband is still there and will rise to the occasion at times when you have needed him you know, real bad. Maybe you are going through a, a time of the month or you're going through an emotional or just a very difficult time. And and he steps up because he realizes he, he has to do that now. But, you know, you're feeling all of that, the emotional toll of feeling unappreciated. And you're, you keep on going because you also might be working outside of the home. And so it becomes double for you. So it's, it's hard. And I'm not going to in any way minimize or say that it's easy. No, but I think it's important for us to constantly remind ourselves that we want to, as I've mentioned in in past episodes, this idea of appreciation, but also gratitude, to keep gratitude in our hearts because a grateful heart cannot at the same time be a bitter heart or resentful. So one of the antidotes for those things is being grateful. You know, what can you be grateful for today in the midst of all of this? The Bible says, you know, in everything, give thanks in everything, not for everything, but in. So even while you're going through this, you can find something to be thankful for. It's it's important that you guard your heart with that. William Ward says this, feeling gratitude and not expressing it. It's like wrapping a present and not giving it. That's a very hard thing, right? So we want to make sure that we constantly walk in gratitude. So one of the things that we want to to say here is how do we then guard our hearts? How do we then find a balance and harmony? Well, we want to make sure gratitude is that thing that graces whatever we're going through. But as I've said many times, One of the most important aspects of what we need to do here is make sure that our communication is up to date. We've got to work on communication, not just communication, but effective communication. I cannot tell you how many couples I've worked with and how many spouses I've worked with. And this is the big one of the biggest areas that keep on um, resurfacing. It's just the communication because we've got to be able to communicate whatever is going on. Because if you're not doing that and your husband is not doing that, well, it's going to happen somewhere. So being able to share your heart and have heart-to-heart talks. But like I've said before, is how do you do that and when, right, is the timing of it. It's making sure that timing is right. You may say, okay, when is the right time? Because every time I try to bring up something and talk to my husband, he's saying, not now. Can we talk about that later? And you feel like, well, later never comes. And it frustrates you, right? But again, we've got to be able to find, you know, maybe schedule, maybe ask, can we schedule this and have a, a heart-to-heart talk? And when you do that, want you, I want to encourage you to keep on using the I statements. You know, I, I feel, I'm thinking, I was wondering, I was hoping I'm just, you know, these I statements is really what you want to make sure is part of the of the vocabulary when you're talking to your husband. And of course, like him to you as well, because you want to do that instead of blaming. It's so easy in moments like this to, to throw the blame game and to point the finger and use the you statements and you, you, you. It's so easy in times like this to do that, right? So we want to be able to to take some deep breath and center ourselves and pray. Ask God. God, give us give us a grace that we will enter that space to have a communication with our, our husband, our spouse, and be able to have God's peace to guard our hearts because we don't want to get to the place where we ourselves start, you know, escalating things. No, we want to de-escalate things because escalating things never and in a way where anybody gets something from it, right? It doesn't do you good, it doesn't do your husband good, and it does not do the relationship any good. Proverbs 15 verse 1 is a great reminder of this, where it says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. We've got to be able 
to guard against that emotion of anger. Now, anger is not a bad emotion. It's just what it's used for. And the Bible tells us very, very, you know, explicitly where it says, guard your heart against anger because be angry, emotion, but sin not. Do not cross the place where you're doing things out of anger because that is sin and God warns against that, right? So here's awesome things I want to kind of just mention and in passing that will help you um, to bring balance and harmony in the home and guard against resentment. Maybe, again, have a family calendar where you're shared with your husband and you both are, have a central calendar where things are there as a great reminder, maybe on the wall where things are, you know, your husband and you, and you can see that. And that might be a great reminder. And he might just need that. It's where you can plan family things and, and you know, the commitments, the date nights and whatever else you need to do. Put that on the calendar. Um, maybe also is establish clear boundaries for work hours and family hours and make sure you stick to them. And this is a hard part because where your husband would have to work very hard at making certain that he do uh, not, does not violate this because it's so easy when you're in zone and you might know this yourself too, when you're in zone, you're working on something and to pull away. It's almost like, oh man, I wish I never had to pull away right now. I'm so close to something. So it has to be honored where these boundaries and these hours, when you set them, you stick to them and make sure everything revolves around those things. Your plan to things that revolve around them, this should be unmovable unless it's an emergency, right? Also about the parenting, taking turns, rotate responsibilities. Again, you could have these huddles on Sundays or the weekend where you plan out the whole week and what's going to happen and what is needed. And you rotate, maybe rotate some schedules. I mean, the, 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 the chores. So each person can get a break because it's so important that you feel like you're doing this together and not by yourself. Maybe on the weekend, right? You may plan some things for the weekend and plan together and making certain that you, the weekends are clear. Because sometimes when I don't communicate and share with plans I have, my wife may may plan something or or vice versa, but only, only to find out. And then I feel I'm, I'm upset because I'm thinking here it is, I'm planning something and, and they have something else planned. Well, it's not their fault. I did not check the calendar or we never talked about that. So we want to make sure our schedules are in alignment. And maybe, maybe sometimes, is invest in help. You know, as I mentioned before, one of the things that helps me to get my work done, my podcast and my YouTube channel, you know, working on other things, my ultra work as, as a clinician, is I have to, to actually hire out and have some people who help me. As I mentioned before, I have a great uh, team and I want to, you know, who help me in my video editing and my podcast editing and, and all of that. Because why? It is it takes off the weight and I don't have to be constantly be overburdened by that. So hire help maybe once every quarter, have someone come in and do a deep cleaning. So it takes that weight of the family. And maybe you say, I can't afford it right now. Well, what can you do? Can there be a work day, you know, and can a family member or a friend come and give you, give you a hand? We got to be creative as well. And maybe, create a vision board together, you know, where you have the goals, the financial goals, or freedom, the travel, whatever else you want to put on that and you have it as a vision board, you're working towards those things, you know. You know, the Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. When two people are working together, you know, I grew up here and two heads are better than one and this is what the scripture is saying. It is so true, right? When you feel like you're a team, you're pulling together, and let me not. And let me say this very, very important. This is one of the high, the, the the most important aspect of everything I've said, and I want to make sure that this is elevated, where to to a high priority is prayer. Make sure you're praying together and seeking God's guidance for strength and harmony. Never neglect praying. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. The Bible says Elijah who prayed and the heavens were shut up for for a time and no rain because he prayed and God asked God. And he said, like Elijah, we he's like a man just like us, a person like us, a human being. And he prayed and God answered. 
And the whole point of that is that God will hear your prayers and answer. So never underestimate the power of prayer for strength and harmony in your heart. You know, Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Remember, it does work. So we want to make sure that prayer is part of what we're doing. I believe if you're able to implement these things we talked about and maybe go back and listen and jot down and sit down with your husband and make have him listen if he if he haven't listened and husband if you're listening and your wife haven't maybe her, may let her invite her to listen this to this podcast and see what can you take from this that will work for you take one or two things and implement that and see what it is that this you got from this episode today and I'd love to hear from you if you do that make sure you reach out to me you can just send me a direct message on my um in my Instagram, right? So you can at Kings of Grant is a great way. Or you can just email me. You can email me at um yeah, you know, sorry, <laughs> build your happier marriage at gmail.com. Build your happier marriage at gmail.com. You can send an email right there and but and, but Instagram is a great way. Just send me a direct message there. That's a great way to communicate with me. Whatever it is that you have on your heart. And I want to encourage you that if that Doing that will be a way to let me know what your thoughts are about this um, podcast. And here's something that I want you to be, make sure that you also get, that I'm putting together a, a wait list for a Happier Marriage by Design program that I'm working on with you in mind. And I believe this program will help you to build your happier marriage, give you the tools and the, what, um, all that, that you need. And so if you are interested in this, Go to buildyourhappiermarriage.com slash waitlist. Buildyourhappiermarriage.com slash waitlist. And by going there, you will be able, once you sign up there, I'll give you um, a free PDF of 11 rules for a happier marriage. 11 rules for a happier marriage that I want to, to give you just for the asking because I think that would be also helpful to you. Now, Again, just um, as I wrap things up here, some key takeaway. takeaways is communication is key, right? I mentioned that schedule regular, meaningful conversations with your spouse, shared responsibilities, delegate tasks and work together to manage household duties, spiritual connection, pray together and seek God's guidance for harmony and balance. When you do that, I believe that God will respond, but you experience um, some great things in your marriage. Now, three of the rules that I have on the 11 rules for marriage, I want to just quickly say them to you. And each of these rules have a paragraph that describes them. But three of those, just to let you hear and know what you're in for, is don't keep score is one. And another one is don't compare. And another is be quick to forgive. Now, these rules have all have a paragraph below that to explain what you experience by we're getting that um, PDF download. It's a one page. You get it right away. Again, go to buildyourhappiermarriage.com slash waitlist. And by doing that, you'll get this free PDF. So, my friend, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, your support. And thank you for just listening and sharing this episode with one other person. I really appreciate that. May God bless you. And I'll see you on the next episode. So with that, peace out. God bless. And I'll see you on the other side.